breach of the peace, breach of the peace, and felony arrest. All right. Remember, we're talking about uh, uh, false arrest and false imprisonment. The grounds for it. Uh, when they can arrest uh, somebody uh, without a warrant, otherwise it's an illegal and unlawful uh, arrest that leads to a tort that leads to claim of damages, okay, for lost time, harm, injury, uh, based upon their malfeasance, okay. What is a breach of the peace? A breach of the peace may be generally defined as a violation of the public order which amounts to a, uh, to a disturbance of the public tranquility or by inciting others to do so. So basically, if you're inciting a riot, insurrection, or seditious behavior, that's grounds for an arrest under disturbing the peace. It is clearly that, uh, that not every misdemeanor is a breach of the peace. To constitute a breach of the peace, there must be some violence or harm existing or threatened to occur to a person, proper, uh, property, health, or morals. Excuse me. A phrase, assault, uh, riotous conduct, or destruction of property make up the largest part that, uh, of what we of what can be called a breach of the peace. Thus, in the majority of cases of a breach of the peace, some actual violence is present. In some states, there, there has been attempts to expand the meaning of be, breach of the peace to include all indictable misdemeanors, but this, is, this, this, it must be confessed, is doing serious violence to a simple expression, easily and well understood. Some of the types of the breach of the peace are described as follows. A breach of the peace includes acts of public uh, turbulence, acts of violence, or tending to produce violence, or tending to incite violence, disturbance of the public uh, tranquility by uh, yelling, hollering, or uttering loud and uh, vicious language. I'm going to attribute that to foul language making disturbing noises on a uh, public street by, in, by one in a state of intoxication, wanton disregard of firearms in public uh, places, engaging in a fray or in an assault, uttering abusive, profane, uh, indecent, or otherwise mm -hmm. proactive, la uh, provocative language. In discussing what constitutes a breach of the peace, the Supreme Court of North Carolina held a breach of the peace is a public offense done, done by violence or one causing or likely to cause an immediate disturbance of public order. Breach of the peace are acts which are malium in se, being wrongful or evil by their nature. Thus, acts which are malium prohibited, uh, malium prohibita, or those acts made wrongfully merely by statute cannot be classed as a breach of the peace. Those acts which constitute a breach of the peace have been settled throughout the course of the common law. The legislator cannot declare any act they choose to be a breach of the peace. The nature of the act determines if it, it, if it fits the common law definition of the breach of the peace. The acts that are only malum prohibita include liquor prohibition laws, traffic laws, labor laws, health laws, food laws, building codes and zoning ordinances, safety acts, game laws, and very, uh, very many other policy uh, regulations. Without a statute, most of the acts uh, constituting these offenses would be innocent acts. A parade on the street is not of itself a breach of the peace, though it could constitute one. The carrying of a firearm is uh, carrying of arms in a quiet, peaceable, and orderly manner concealed or concealed on or about the person is not a breach of the peace, nor does uh, such an act of itself tend to a breach of the peace. A mere trespass is not a breach of the peace and does not impose criminal liability upon the wrongdoer. Driving an automobile while intoxicated constitutes a breach of the peace. Uh, incident exposure as where one is walking in public naked or, or nearly naked, or an incident dress is uh, disruptive of the morals of society and constitutes a breach of the peace. Blasphemy of Christ or Christianity in public is a breach of the peace. Now in today's society, damn near 
talking about morals, I wonder if there's anything left to breach of the peace, because, I mean, we see all kinds of things nowadays on the streets uh, and, and half-naked people all day long. So back then, it was uh, if you showed your ankles, boy, that was, a, that was a big deal. Nowadays, people are walking around in Brazilian G-strings, for Pete's sake. A mere violation of public decorum or penal law does not constitute a breach of the peace. Conduct merely accounting to a nuisance is not per se a breach of the peace. The sale of 15 dynamite caps to a 15-year-old boy did not constitute a breach of the peace. A theft is, is not in its nature a breach of the peace. A charge of disorderly conduct is a, a broader term than a breach of the peace because a person who commits a breach of the peace is necessarily guilty of disorderly conduct. However, all acts of disorderly conduct are not necessarily breaches of the peace. Littering or yelling are such cases. Breach of the peace is a common law offense, but is not itself a specific offense. Thus, in a in a charge or indictment, the specific offense must be specified. Arrest for breaches of the peace. In the struggle for government to claim and exercise greater powers of arrest, it has unlawfully attempted to apply the common law rule for a breach of the peace arrest to all misdemeanors. The general rule of law under the common law for the arrest of a misdemeanor offense amounting to a breach of the peace is stated as follows. In cases of misdemeanors, a peace officer likely like a private person has at common law no power to, of arresting without a warrant except when in a breach of a peace has been committed in in his presence or there is reasonable ground for uh, supposing that a breach of the peace is about to be committed or renewed in his presence an arrest can only be made to suppress and prevent the breach of the peace. And if the act ceases, there is no longer justification for the arrest without warrant. So again, uh, you know, if you're being warned, hey, uh, your, your actions uh, may be leading to uh, uh, disturbing the peace, it may be wise to gather yourself and, and uh, you know, carry on. Um, don't give them a reason to say, yep, oh, it, I, I warned him, he didn't stop. <laughs> Merely just having a conversation that the agent and agency doesn't like does not constitute a breach of the peace, so long as you're not yelling at the top of your lungs, disturbing other people about you. The constable mm -hmm. cannot arrest, but when he sees an actual breach of the peace, and if the affray be over, he cannot arrest, and where a breach of the peace had been committed and was over, the constable must proceed in the same way as any other person, namely by obtaining a warrant from a magistrate. The rule for arrest without warrant involving misdemeanors was stated in an article in the Michigan Law Review as follows. Neither, uh, neither O, a peace officer, nor C, a private citizen, may arrest D, a person for a misdemeanor, which is not a BP breach of the peace. In regards to this rule, it, it is stated... Neither an officer nor a citizen may arrest for a misdemeanor which does not amount to a breach of the peace even though it occurs in his presence, as for example, talking loudly in the street in the presence of the officer who ordered the parties to be quiet, an arrest without a warrant was not justified, nor with D in the presence of O was turning towards the wall for a particular purpose or of relief in the streets, or where he was uh, disturbing a public meeting or obstructing a free passage across a bridge or refusing to move on on a sidewalk at the request of the officer or frequently su uh, substituting a small, smaller for a larger check or fr fraudulently evading payment of a railroad fare or maintaining a billboard on a sidewalk or ins insulting the head of the house in the presence of his family or assembling uh, to witness a Sunday ball game or a movie show. It is a common rule that, that an officer cannot arrest for a breach of peace after it has ended. When a breach of peace uh, ceases, the reason for the arrest ceases, that being to stop or prevent the breach of the public order, Mr. Bishop, in the treatise, uh, treatise on commercial uh, criminal procedure. Speaking on the subject of arrest for breach of the peace says, after after the uh, tumult is over, with no prospect of its renewal, it is too late to, infer uh, to inferior with uh, to interfere without judicial process. Another past me uh, 
and other past misdemeanors are within the same rule, namely, that a private person or even an officer cannot without a warrant arrest one for a misdemeanor committed on an occasion already passed. First British Criminal Procedure, uh, it's First Bish Criminal Procedure, subsection 166-167. The principle behind the common law rule of arrest was that in order to prevent harm, violence, or disturbance to the public peace, it is necessary that those... Per uh, perpe perpetrating such acts be per, uh, promptly stopped by arrest. Where, however, the offense is an accomplished fact, it, its, pre its prevention is no longer possible. Also, if the public order has been fully restored before the officer appears, the power to arrest without warrant for misdemeanor breach of the peace no longer exists for the, for the end by which such authority to arrest is allowed. To maintain the public peace is no longer attainable. The occasion which would uh, justify arrest without process for vagrancy would indeed be very rare, inasmuch it involves no immediate danger to the public or the private uh, security. Under American common law, no one can be required to give an account of themselves or to show that they have a visible means of support or that they have employment. As part of the right to life, all have a right to choose how to live and how to support themselves, and no government act can interfere with this right. The majority of the misdemeanor offenses would not fall in the class of the breach of the peace, which allow the immediate intervention of authority to uh, by arrest, as they are not an offense of, of a grave nature, or because they do not actually disturb the public peace. An arrest for breach of the peace in an officer's presence must be made promptly, either at the time of the offense or as soon as the circumstances permit. If the officer does not act immediately after the offense has been committed, he can, uh, he can thereafter make arrest only by procuring a warrant. When an officer, after having seen a breach of the peace committed, departs on other business or for other purposes and afterward returns, he cannot without warrant make an arrest for an offense. But where the officer finds it necessary to procure assistance, a reasonable time may be employed in the pursuit. In such a case, the officer must at once set about the arrest and follow up the effort until the arrest is effected. An unreasonable delay will make the arrest invalid. In order to justify a delay, there should be a continued attempt on the part of the officer to make the arrest. It has been erroneously stated that the officers are authorized to break into a house or building to prevent the commission of a, uh, of a crime without a warrant. This is an invalid Ex uh, exaggeration of the true law on the matter, which is revealed as follows. The authority of a constable to break open doors and arrest without a warrant is confined to cases where treason or felony has been committed, or if there is an affray or breach of the peace in his presence to hail PC 86 uh, 96, one Hawkins C period 63, subsection 16, one Russell on crimes. 629 and First Chitty's Criminal Law 1415 and Bacon ABR period Constable C21. The case in which a breach of the peace uh, occurs in the presence of an officer when done in a building would be very rare. The case of a felony and treason in such a case would most often occur where the felon was pursued into a building by the officer. Public drunkenness unaccompanied by language or conduct which creates a breach of the peace will not justify arrest without a warrant. Impute, in, impudent abuse of a Offensive language addressed to a peace officer does not tend to breach, breach of the peace, even though it may provoke the officer to anger, and it, it has been held that the mere refusal to give one's name and address does not justify the incarceration of a citizen. Threatened breach of the peace. An officer cannot arrest because he thinks or has suspicion that a breach of the peace might be committed. The cause for arresting upon such case must be when a breach of the peace is threatened or it, it its occurrence is imminent in determining when the officer may interfere by an arrest or to prevent a threatened breach of the peace, the Supreme Court of Michigan stated, we are of the opinion that the threat or other indication of a breach of the peace will not justify an officer in making an arrest unless the facts are such as 
would warrant the officer in believing an arrest is necessary to prevent an immediate execution thereof, as where a threat is made coupled with some overt act in an attempt ex attempted execution thereof. The object of permitting an arrest under such circumstances is to prevent the breach of the peace where the facts so uh, show danger of its being immediately committed. Thus, the interpretation of the officer in a threatened breach of the peace is not for the purpose of an arrest, but to prevent a disturbance of breach of the peace under a present menace of violence. The courts are almost unanimous in, in their holdings that a threatened breach of the peace will not justify an arrest without warrant unless the fact or, facts are such as would warrant the officer in believing an arrest necessary to prevent an immediate execution thereof, as were the uh, the threat is made coupled with some overt act and attempted execution thereof. In such cases, the officer need not wait until the offense is actually committed. The guideline then for making an arrest on what is so uh, what is to be called a threatened breach of the peace is when the conditions are such that a the threatened breach of the peace is eminent or that it is obvious to the average person that it is going to occur, as held by the Supreme Court of North Carolina. We think that a breach of the peace is threatened if the offending person Con, uh, person's conduct under the surrounding facts and circumstances is such as reasonably justifies a, a belief that the uh, perpetration of an offense amounting to a breach of the peace is eminent. Since in the nature of most breaches of the peace are such that cause violence in, to persons or property, the act which constitutes them are apparent, so that all, one can readily see or hear them occurring. It is said a breach of the peace is committed in one's presence when, by the use of his sense, he knows of its commission by the person about to be arrested. Thus, an arrest for a breach of the peace may be made when one's sense of afford him knowledge that it is being committed. Whether th uh, through sight, hearing, or other senses, an arrest... Uh, for breach of the peace cannot be made on suspicion of mere belief. An arrest for a breach of the peace cannot be justified merely upon belief or suspicion existing in the mind of the officer, but where the action of the person and the surrounding circumstances are such as to indicate the threatened breach of the peace, the arrest may be lawfully made. It is thus said that an officer cannot arrest for a misdemeanor or a breach of the peace based solely upon information from another or suspicious without uh, from another or, or suspicion without a warrant. In no case could advice or uh, information give, given after the arrest was made justify uh, justify the was made justify the arrest. Likewise, an arrest cannot be made for one purpose and justified for another. Conditions of felony arrest. It is the, it was regarded under the common law to be a right and a duty for a citizen to arrest one he sees committing a felony without a warrant, as stated by Justice Platt, P L A T T. All persons, whoever who are present when a felony is committed or a dangerous uh, wound is given, are bound to apprehend the offenders. Three Hawkins, P C, one fifty seven arrest S period 1, period 31. To arrest a person for a felony not witnessed by the officer, he must be able to conclude from the facts then existing that a certain person did commit a felony, did commit the felony, so that so that any prudent person would be led to believe likewise. An arrest for felony based upon suspicion, belief, or rumor can never be justified for any case whatsoever. Not even by a warrant can such a, an arrest be lawful. Where there is a felony and it is passed, the officer is justified in arresting though no offense has been committed, yet he must have had reasonable cause to suspect the one uh, apprehended, which means reasonable articulable suspicion, uh, compounded with a reasonable, articulable fact. It means he's got to have witnesses and an aggrieved party, ladies and gentlemen. Okay? To allow arrest for suspicion, even in the case of a felony, would make everyone susceptible to arrest who the officer might choose to believe is likely or possible uh, perpetrator of a crime. Well, simply just getting out of bed, everybody's capable and, and suspected of being a criminal, okay? It would, in effect, amount to a general warrant in the hands of any officer, a concept which was founded to be so abhorrent to the founding fathers of the American Revolution. All arrests for felonies not seen or witnessed by an officer or a citizen making the same 
making the arrest, have the burden to justify the arrest. In a felony arrest by a private citizen, he must justify the arrest by showing that the, that the felony had actually been committed and that he had reasonable grounds for believing the person arrested to be guilty. An officer is required only to show the probable cause existing for making the arrest and need, to, need not show that a felony actually occurred, though such proof could serve as justification in all other arrests. Probable cause is not a factor in justifying an arrest without a warrant. It is well settled at the common law that an officer or private person without warrant may lawfully seize and detain another in a case where a felony was about to occur. If two or more persons fighting and there be reason to fear that one of them will be likely killed by the other, it will be lawful to part and imprison them till their anger shall be cooled. Bacon ABR Trespass D, 2 Roll ABR 559, and private persons may justify breaking and entering the plaintiff's house and imprisoning his person to prevent him from murdering his wife. The law on mm -hmm. felony arrest allowed all peaceable persons to travel freely anywhere without having to worry about an arrest or warrant for a felony. This is because all persons know what constitutes a felony, that being intrinsically evil acts such as murder, kidnapping, rape, arson, mayhem, armed robbery, and other such uh, art articulous crimes. No one commits a felony accidentally or without for uh, foreknowledge of the fact or of the act. Thus, a felon's arrest comes as no surprise to him. When we come back, we're going to be talking about defenses to unlawful arrest, okay? What you're going to use uh, in your defense for an unlawful arrest. And we've already covered that in some of this uh, literature, and we're going to go even deeper into it, okay? So thanks for joining me. Thanks for all your support, and much love.